our previous video, we learned how to construct different cohorts based on various features. We estimated the difference in survival between two cohorts on a Kaplan-Meier plot, and we manually identified the features that led to cohorts with distinct survival characteristics. This time, I'll show you how to do all of this in orange automatically. But before that, let's explore the features of a slightly more complex data set. We can find the available survival data sets in orange using the dataset widget. Just type survival into the search bar. Now for this example, let's use the German breast cancer study group data. Select the data set, then we can inspect it in a data table. Now the first two columns show the time and the event, specifically the recurrence free survival time. This is the time between the start of the study and the recurrence of cancer. The rest of the data is full of other clinical variables, some of them categorical, like tumor grade, and other continuous ones, like the patient's age. For any data available directly in orange, the time and event columns will already be set. However, it's still a good practice to use the as survival widget just to make sure that all the features are set up correctly. Now we can plot the data according to any categorical feature by connecting the data output to the Kaplan-Meier widget. There are three categorical features to choose from, tumor grade, menopausal status, and hormonal therapy. Let's try menopausal status first. Also, I want to see the median and the confidence intervals to get a better idea of the data. We can see that being in menopause doesn't really have much effect on survival. The curves are barely separated and the p-value is quite large. So what about hormonal therapy? This, on the other hand, turns out to be very informative. The patients that did not receive hormonal therapy had a significantly worse prognosis. Now moving on, using numeric features to form cohorts takes an extra step. We first have to define a threshold that will split our data. The best way to do this is with the distributions widget. So say we're interested in whether there's a significant difference in survival between patients above and below the age of 60. First, I'll change the bid width to a smaller number, five should do. Then I'll select the population above 60. Now to see what we've done, we'll use another data table. The default output here is only the selected data which in our case means only the patients above 60, but we want all the patients, so we'll have to rewire the connections bit. Now, the data table shows everyone, and we find an extra column called selected that specifies the group. Now that we know how to get the connections we want, we can do the same to send the data from distributions to Captain Meyer. It turns out that whether a patient is above or below 60 doesn't make a big difference in the survival probability over the observed time. But we can also try different thresholds. For example, let's select everyone over the age of 40. You can see that orange automatically reflects this change in the plot. And there is a more significant difference between the survival curves now. So next, let's try another continuous variable like progesterone receptors. So select just the first bid, since it already contains more than half of the patients, and this time we really do see a big difference. Now we could spend all day plotting survival curves for each feature in the data set and compare how much impact each of them have, or we could let Orange do some of the work for us here. This is where the Reg Survival Features widget comes in. It forms cohorts for each variable and evaluates the difference in survival using the log rank test. So let's send our data to rank survival features. There's a selection of two scoring methods here for establishing which feature is most predictive of survival. And orange automatically selects the multivariate log rank test, so we'll just stick with that for now. 
Moving on, we can sort the features by p-value. This way, we find the most informative is the number of positive nodes. Now here, positive nodes refer to the lymph nodes in the armpit area where metastatic cancer cells have often been found. Now, I'm curious what the survival curve actually looks like in this case. So the output of the rank survival features widget is a reduced data set containing only the time and event columns along with a selected feature. So we can select number of positive nodes. Then what we need to do is again, split the data at the median. We could do this via distributions like before, or as an alternative, we could also use the discretize widget. Let's connect them and split our data into two intervals of equal frequency. Now we can connect this to another Kaplan-Meier widget and there we go. So in this video, we poked around one of Orange's preloaded survival data sets that contains data on patients with breast cancer. We visualized how different features affect survival and identified some of the most predictive ones. Next time, we'll look at some genomic survival data and see how to analyze thousands of features at a time.